Hi everybody, it's March 27, 2019. I want to go through some information that uh, should really concern everybody regarding food shortages, prices increasing, more flooding on the way, and a possible Oroville Dam breach, which I'll get to in a moment. But this is today. Like clockwork, as winter turns to spring in states like Nebraska, Missouri, and Kansas, heavy rains send the Missouri River surging. 2019 is shocking even longtime locals. Every year we see a, a rise in the river level. Uh, this right here ab absolutely is historic. This is a new record level for us. In Elwood, Kansas, that record came on Friday. The Missouri stood at 32 feet or 9.8 meters. Only a levee fortified by sandbags now stands between the river and this community of 1,400 people, most of whom have chosen to evacuate. Most of the town is empty at this point, including most of the businesses. A lethal combination of rain, snow melt, and breaking ice jams upriver has already left an ugly mark on places like Bellevue, Nebraska. Mark Moorhead runs a recreational vehicle campground. He described what it was like a week and a half ago when residents here scrambled for their lives in the early morning hours. The fastest I've ever seen the Missouri River rise, it was ungodly fast. And uh, a lot of people didn't have time to, no one got time to get anything out of here. The damage in Nebraska alone has been immense. Some 2,000 homes and 340 businesses damaged or destroyed. Losses to property, livestock, and crops now estimated at $1.4 billion, and that number is expected to go up. This is Paradise Lakes Mobile Home Park. On a normal day, there's lots of activity here. It's a scenic place to live, just a stone's throw from the Missouri River. But now it's a ghost town. Floodwaters have made this place uninhabitable. This is what it looked like soon after the river engulfed this community. Many residents who left were told don't plan to return. There was water all the way up into their backyard. There was uh, like water all the way up until that truck right there. Like it was, it was pretty bad. Although Elwood has been spared so far, the worry here is about Highway 36, which connects the town to the outside world. The Connecting the town to hospitals, major stores, uh, and uh, doctors, uh, medical centers. So that is another, that's another area of Missouri I've posted on the flooding that is occurring once again with the Missouri River and other rivers that are overflowing. And you listen to people, what do they say? Oh, it's historic. Never saw, never saw this kind of flooding before. Never, the Missouri River never saw it come up so fast. Oh boy. <clears throat> well, they are saying more and more flooding is coming to areas that are prime farming areas in our country. U.S. farmers in portions of Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, and elsewhere continue to deal with flooding and excessive moisture. There is obvious concern that recent flooding will have implications on 2019 crop production. Early corn planting will not be an option in most of these areas. In fact, it's unlikely that planting begins on time in many areas of the U.S. due to excessive moisture. Some people believe that heavy rains could even impact final yields this year. I think it's a little too early to make that argument, although that sort of talk has not been totally absent. On the flip side, recent flooding has certainly had a negative impact on demand. News outlets report that 13% of U.S. ethanol production was knocked offline as a result of flooding. As a result of flood-induced problems on the rail and river systems, export shipments have suffered. Recent floods have been devastating for grain and livestock operations in the western Corn Belt. Farmers hope that weather patterns turn and offer some relief. And it doesn't seem like that's going to be happening, but, you know, so you know that man can control the weather. And you know, based on your research, watching all of the frequency signatures on satellite, looking at all of the geoengineering 
Yes, the spraying of aerosols, particulates into the atmosphere, hit those with frequencies, yada, yada, yada. You come up with weather. And then you have to bump into videos like this. As we're filming this video, floodwaters are moving across the Midwest, swamping towns. So what does this mean? Where are these floodwaters coming from and what causes them? Oh, my God. So if you think about it, springtime is a time when all this snow that's fallen all winter starts melting, you know, things heat up. And this past winter, the winter between 2018 and 2019, a lot of snow got dumped on the northern part of the country. You have to listen to an idiot like this. A dangerous, useful idiot. These creators, live science, you know, well, 8,000, close to 9,000 views. What's behind the massive Midwestern floods? Well, we got a lot of snow this winter, and when the temperature rises, the snow melts. Central U.S. to be target of large storm with flooding rain, severe weather late this week. So, the National Guard airdrops hay to cattle, isolated by historic flooding. A large storm will affect the flood-weary central United States and produce heavy rain and thunderstorms with localized severe weather. Well, can we count on that? No. No. We were supposed to get thunderstorms here Monday. Did we? No. And very often the uh, forecasting is so wrong. Uh, we heard another bomb cyclone is going to be hitting the northeast after the bomb cyclone hit the central plains. Well, it didn't happen. So while you do have to uh, pay attention to what it is that they are saying about the weather, well, you also have to understand that it may occur. Just prepare. Keep yourself prepared. Be 24-7 ready. Um, because if they want to bring on something catastrophic, they will. So, these thunderstorms, the heavy rain, typical for the spring in this area, well, what does that mean? For this year, a new round of problems for residents, for travelers in the region. Enough rain may fall with the storm from the central plains to part of the Midwest to aggravate the flooding situation. A large swath of one to three inches of rain is likely to fall from eastern Nebraska and Kansas to northern Ohio and southern Michigan with the storm from Friday uh, to Saturday and locally higher amounts to four inches are likely. So you have a large swath with one to three inches but then locally you're gonna get four inches. Oh, okay. Uh, the bulk of the rain will fall south of the area where deep snow remains on the ground over the northern plains and the upper Midwest. Major flooding has begun along the Minnesota, Big Sioux, uh, James, and northern Mississippi rivers this week and is expected to continue into April. Major flooding is forecasted along the Red River of the north from April to May. Well, <laughs> this is interesting. While there may not always be a major severe weather outbreak with every such storm, there are risks to lives and property, even on a small scale. You know, we never saw this kind of destruction before. It's only been the recent years. Another storm unloads. Soaking rain, heavy snow in California. Well. Doesn't seem to be an actual end in sight. More storms are headed toward the west coast. The last few months have been so wet, 
that the state's drought has ended, a problem that plagued California since 2011. The whole state is out of drought-like conditions, um, which is great moving forward. However, I have to caution people that just because we've had this uh, increased precipitation this year doesn't mean next year we're guaranteed to have more rain. This what? Um, did you hear the echo? Okay. Even on AccuWeather, this echo uh, seems to be happening. So uh, um, I mention that only because, well, a lot of you have been hearing an echo on my video. It's not coming from my end. So unsettled weather. Now we have unsettled weather. Unsettled weather will continue across the West, West Coast this week as more rain and mountain snow targets Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. You've got a large swath of weather as well. Rain will pick up over much of the region, mainly over coastal areas of Northern California, Southwestern Oregon, and in the foothills of the Sierra, flooding will be possible as many areas have already exceeded their normal rainfall for the month. Rainfall amounts could total close to six inches in the coastal range, rain, uh, ranges in the foothills of the Saharas. Look at this, okay? They are sticking it in our face, telling us right there, our meteorologists lie to us all the time, and they're showing you here. This is not natural, what you're looking at. You're looking at all of the frequencies right down here uh, in, what is this, Arizona, you can see the frequencies, you can see the ripple effect, you can see the grid pattern, you can see, oh wow, huh, now we've got this little <laughs> straight-edged, um, well, it's kind of like a rectangle of cloud that does not move. It is not moving with the other cloud, uh, artificial cloud substance. Look at all of these straight edges right here. You see cloud being made. It's so obvious they are putting it in our face, but they know that most Americans have just shut off their, their uh, brains. Um, they don't think anymore. Look at this, okay? This section of cloud right here does not move at all. You have the geoengineering going on that's plain, it's right in your face, right here in the coast. Oh my God, Americans, wake the hell up, please. I understand why they call it sleeping. If you can't see this, for what it is, and you can't, you know, our clouds, well, they don't, they're not straight line defined, okay? Uh, and they don't just sit in particular areas while other clouds just fly on by. What are we going to do, guys? All right, well, Oroville. Damn, engineering expert blasts management failures at Oroville Dam. State water resources officials and federal regulators caused the failure of the Oroville Dam spillway in February by ignoring long established guidelines and neglecting their duty to manage risks and detect flaws. That coming from a scathing report by a Berkeley engineering expert when are we uh, going to get government doesn't work for you. It works against you. It steals your money. And these people don't even do the work that, well, you're paying for. And they leave you living in areas where your environment just becomes more and more of a safety hazard. It's dangerous. It's toxic. And I'll show you more toxicity going on in other areas of our country. But a large portion disintegrated February 7 after heavy rains 
filled the reservoir to the brim. That failure forced operators to deploy the dam's emergency spillway, sending water over a bare hillside, which caused near catastrophic erosion and forced the evacuation of more than 180,000 people from downstream communities. Subsequent reports concluded that the main chute didn't have water stops to seal joints and prevent leaks from weakening, weakening it. Also, there was too little steel reinforcement in the structure, and the pipes that drain water beneath it were made of clay instead of the particular substance, superior PVC, um, that was needed. Design flaws in the base slabs of the spillway, poor foundation work, work a faulty drainage system, and ineffective maintenance of the 770-foot earthen dam that was completed in 1968. Many of the defects were uncovered in, in inspections dating back to 2008, but were not adequately repaired or resolved by the State Department of Water Resources, which runs the dam. State officials have said they did everything they could to keep that dam safe. Wow, I guess we're just stupid. I guess we're just uh, not really cut out for this job. Do you think they'll ever say that? No. You'll just keep paying more and more and more money, handing over your tax dollars to the government of California, and you will get more and more destruction going on. This is this is deliberate, guys. But why am I bringing this up now? Why is it important now? Look at what you're looking at. You've had tremendous snows. You have had a whole lot of rain. So could this dam go? Absolutely. 1.1 billion spent to repair Oroville Dam is failing as water is seeping through the rebuilt spillway, threatens new mass evacuations over the risk of the dam collapsing. This was written March 18. According to national dam expert Scott Cahill of Watershed Services of Ohio, Oroville Dam is on the same failure track as in 2017 with visible water seepage trickling from the foot of the dam and dozens of points along the dam's principal spillway, Cahill warns that warming temperatures magnified by precipitation is a growing threat to the dam. Yeah, everybody, 24-7, ready. Ready to split. Green spots, this was, oh, this was dated, I'm sorry, uh, and updated, no. This is a July 28, 2017. So yeah, the green spots. Well, what's interesting about this article? Here, green spots on the backside of California's Oroville Dam have some engineers and scientists concerned. Wet area on the dam where the grass is lush and appear as green spots might be the result of a slow leak that could lead the dam to breach. Oroville Dam may be facing a breach danger. This was back in 2017. And this article, um, dated today. No, dated July 21, 2017. This is the damage seen on March 3rd. So this is a 2017 article. I'm oh, sorry, I just got these from subscribers. And I, I assumed that these were um, these were uh, current you know articles but March 18 2019 March 18 2019 March 18 2019 growing threat and the green spots why I want to read this 
California Department of Water Resources responded to concern over the green spots in the past and said the vegetation growth was from a natural spring or rain. Well, what does this uh, engineering expert say? Do not try to ignore persistent wet spots in the nation's tallest embankment dam. Do not try to explain them away using trite explanations like all dams have leaks or it's a natural spring. This dam is an extremely important part of California's water supply infrastructure system. If this dam failed catastrophically during high water in the reservoir, which you're looking at right now, there would be significant deaths and injuries, loss of property and productivity and damage to the environment. Remember, 180,000 evacuated last year. Hail slams Florida cities as storm passes through. This was today. Social media was hot Wednesday morning with talk about ice hailing down on communities north and uh, north and central Florida. But this was pretty intense. This was in 1992. A severe storm that passed over Orlando left two and a half feet of the icy remains, leaving hundreds of cars damaged. Look at this, Florida. Do you think that they might have been, you know, trying to perfect their, their weather modification? So we have also a slow computer. Um, Baseball-sized hail strikes Oklahoma. This was Sunday evening. And here we go. Oklahoma. Storm rips roof off downtown Clanton, Clanton business. This in Alabama. This was posted March 25. The roof of a barber shop in downtown um, Clanton was ripped off. Severe weather in Alabama again. We had uh, enormous hail in North Texas that left vehicles damaged. With after those powerful hailstorms moved through the area yesterday. We have some video from McKinney you have to see. Now look at that. A neighborhood street turned into a river as hail pelted cars and homes. Heavy rains made a strong current, enough to knock over trash bins in that neighborhood, sending garbage flowing into the street. And not far from there, a church in Allen took a huge hit during the storm. This morning, church staff and volunteers are trying to clean up the mess at Cottonwood Creek Baptist Church. Our Courtney Gilmore is there now with a look at that damage. The storm took a lot of people in Collin County off guard, including the people who were parked in the back of the uh, church here. Case in point, you can see some of the damage on the hood of this car where uh, hail just pelted down on the body of the car and then also of course the front windshield right here you can see that it's just spider webbed out right there there's also damage again to the top of the car and then the back is already uh, covered there because hail smashed through the window but we're told by the staff here at the church that the main damage is on the top of the building Last night, hail left huge holes where water was able to collect and start causing a lot of damage inside of the church. Rain-soaked ceiling tiles are still falling from the top of the building. The church staff will be assessing the damage all week. We spoke to a spokesperson for State Farm, and he says the phone has been ringing nonstop from customers throughout Collin County. He tells us the damages seen have been extensive. Wide range of damage, obviously from the hail that we experienced last night, including some broken skylights in homes, damaged roof and broken windows in, in vehicles as well. You want to 
Um, be super cautious and avoid scams and make sure you get plenty of written estimates, multiple risk, written estimates, get everything in writing. Guys, I'm sorry. <clears throat> you know, Hal <laughs> did, did not create this kind of damage. Hal, uh, it, it didn't come down with such a force that it literally broke car windows, dented cars, left holes in roofs that caused flooding. We have to start thinking. Americans have to start thinking again. Cloud of cancer-causing chemical hangs over the Houston Channel. Okay, well, oil byproducts from a damaged storage facility contaminated the Houston Ship Channel and created a cloud of cancer-causing benzene over the waterway. The latest mutation of one of the worst Gulf Coast chemical disasters in more than a decade. Yep, U.S. Coast Guard forbidding vessel traffic on a stretch of the key industrial shipping route after a wall collapse and a fire at Intercontinental Terminals companies. Um, already damaged chemical storage complex on Friday. A mix of toxic gasoline ingredients, firefighting foam, and dirty water flowed from the site into the channel, and a benzene plume above the water poses a threat to ship crews. The benzene left people nauseous, headaches, feeling nausea, and getting headaches and other symptoms, drove about 1,000 people to seek treatment at a pop-up clinic with 15 severe cases. They loaded onto ambulances and hauled to hospital emergency rooms. It's been a never-ending, recurring case of things not working out as planned. Our government Agencies like the Department of Water Resources in California can't quite figure out how to get a dam repaired. These chemical fires, the oil spills, the releasing of toxic chemicals into our waterways, this is happening. It, it's now, it, that's the new normal. Jerry Brown. That's the new normal. Man failing at everything. So could it be deliberate? Yes. Weary residents are on edge, wondering what's next and when normal life will return. It ain't returning. This is life now. With no security. For many Houstonians, it's the worst industrial disaster since the 20, uh, 2005 BP oil spill, killing 15. Yeah. So, um, what else do I have? Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. They are suffering two weeks of flooding with the National Guard. Not arriving for quite some time. Though the governor says, I put in the request for the National Guard to come out and help you in the Pine Ridge Reservation. Uh, those who were on the reservation say, oh, it took days and days and days. Massive flooding. And get ready for more. Get ready for more. And I'll end with this. Iran. Turned away in Iran, where devastating flash floods have killed at least 21 people. New video from social media shows fast-moving water swooping up cars and ravaging parts of the country. Extreme rainfall has triggered flooding in 20 of Iran's 31 provinces. More than 100 people have been injured, 
and many more are in desperate need of relief. The floods hit during Iran's New Year holidays, and that means that many aid workers are away from home, slowing response efforts. Iran's energy minister has blamed climate change for the unprecedented floods. More heavy rain is expected tomorrow, and many mountainous regions are bracing for potential mudslides and avalanches. Climate change. Climate change. Early February. Climate change, weather weapons, and earthquake bombs. World leaders condemn Britain and America's secret arsenal. I know I was going to end with that video in Iran, but when I heard climate change, well, <sighs> Americans, Iranians, Brits, Scots, Aussies, Canadians, Mexicans, Venezuelans, all of us, people of the world, this weather is not Mother Nature, nor is it the result of climate change. Climate always changes. The changing aspects of our weather, like hail, literally busting out car windows, leaving holes in roofs, the massive flooding, historic, never seen it come up so fast, never seen it like this ever in my life, never ever, we're hearing it over and over and over again. It is not because you drive a car. It is not because there's too many people on the planet. It is not because you use air conditioning. It is not because cows fart. It is because man has been using this technology that they have perfected to create these events. It is the use of weather as a weapon. Yeah, it's hard to comprehend that. If you don't comprehend it, watch out for your area because now tornadoes can happen anywhere and flooding can happen anywhere and massive, oh, cyclones now erupt in the center of a country. So much is happening that should beg questions. Government-sponsored technologies for weather modification. Washington's New World Order weapons have the ability to trigger climate change. Yeah, they are inducing this change by the use of the technology, modifying the weather, geoengineering, Weather warfare, the invisible U.S. military offenses in weather weaponry. How about Navy research paper disrupt economies with man-made floods and droughts? Timeline history of weather modification, weather warfare, climate modification, and geoengineering, especially the USA. These are old uh, captures that I just had on my hard drive. If you want to get to the articles, just put the title in any search engine and you'll get it. Weather modification, the ultimate weapon, the ultimate weapon. And here, there was a little, you know, one of those stickies or whatever you call them. And it said, a superior piece of work, first rate research review. 1993, Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, a research report submitted to the faculty in fulfillment of the curriculum requirement. Weather modification, the ultimate weapon. All right, guys. Yeah, it's very hard to, um, to deal with all of this. Very hard. But, you know, and I have Included this video so often, and Texas weather modification director storms can be made longer. 
produce more rain over larger areas. And because my computer sucks, um, and it's not coming up now, I have it posted on my channel. This is Mr. Weather Modifier in Texas. He giving an interview. And he states very clearly, storms can be, oh, oh, let's see, can you crawl, can it, oh, it's creeping up, it's creeping, maybe, no. Um, storms can be made longer. Here. It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. Wow. So the simple act of seeding clouds could get more rain, could make the storm last longer, and even make it bigger. Produce more rain over a larger area. When you have like the director of Texas Weather Modification saying this in an interview, and you still can't get through to people. Well, you have to regard them as the enemy because they are absolutely uh, the useful idiots that allow this to just continue. And they are, you got blood on your hands, Mr. Idiot here. You got blood on your hands because you refuse to do the research to find out that man is using weather as a weapon. Come on. It's time to grow up, do some research, act like responsible adults, and you know, if if people would just wake up, we could we could have an effect. We could possibly get this stuff, but uh, all links are.